We welcome you to our service of worship. This is our traditional Thanksgiving Sunday service, and we greet all of our special guests today. It was so wonderful to have you, and we're giving thanks for the reason that we're all here for this baptismal service. This is great. Uh, this is a part of the highlight of the life of the church. And I want to recognize our guests that are here. 
those of you that are here with families or, families or friends of those who are being baptized today, please stand if you can do so comfortably. I want our folks to see you. Look at this. Thank you. Isn't it wonderful to see this many people supporting those of their family members and friends who are being baptized? I ask great. That's great. It truly is a day of Thanksgiving and a day of celebration. We're glad to have you. I'm not going to go through the announcements that are in the bulletin. Please, all of Little Rock folks, please look at those, especially the first uh, two after, the, after today's worship. The point said is the Monday service and the Tuesday services. Please read those. Don't forget those. Alice, are you ready for your minute and a half? Where are you? Oh, there you behind me. <laughs> For the blood drive tomorrow, I forgot to, to tell my callers to let me know if anybody wants an appointment for tomorrow, if you're working and you're, you're timing it so that you might or might not can get here tomorrow. If you would like an appointment, that means you don't have to wait in line. When you come in, you sign in, you go to the front of the line. So if anybody wants an appointment for tomorrow, no matter what time it is, if you will either call me or see me after church, I'll put you down so that you don't have to wait when you come in. But please, please grab somebody from work or, or somebody from your house when you come in. Our goal is 57. I would really love to meet him. Thank you. Please do pay attention to your bulletin insert. Um, there's a lot of things going on. Um, the blankets are due uh, here next Sunday, December 1st. The items for the shoe boxes um, are due by December 1st. There's still some tags. I know on the CEC tree there's probably still some tags out there. Um, be sure to look at the com list of things that the community outreach team is doing. We will be doing an angel tree. More information about that will be in the newsletter. Um, so be sure to keep that in mind. Um, and look at everything that's going on this week. This week. Um, we do have the covered dish dinner tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, the community Thanksgiving service on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. But we do not have anything on Wednesday going on here other than Wednesday morning I need some volunteers to help in setting up and decorating the tree in Heritage Hall and decorating some bulletin boards and things like that. So especially middle schoolers and high schoolers and parents and anybody who can help with that, that please be here Wednesday at 10 a.m. Um, be sure to take note of all the things that we have coming up for Advent and Christmas because it's right around the corner. Um, at this time, let us prepare our hearts for worship. <coughs> Thank you.
please stand and join us in the responsive call to worship that's in your bulletin. Water is essential for all of life. Water, all life ends. God, through Christ, has redeemed us in the healing waters of baptism. However, we sometimes choose to live broken lives. Let the baptismal waters of Christ heal us and bring us new life. We eagerly receive the redemption and forgiveness of Christ. Jerry, would you lead us as we pray? Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this beautiful and glorious worship service that we are having today. Lord, as we stand in your presence, Lord, we ask for the forgiveness of our own sins. And Lord, we just praise, praise your name for your presence as you have promised us. And Lord, as we continue in this service, we ask that every heart and mind and soul are open and receptive to your Spirit's leading. And Lord, that this will be a service of celebration, a service of love. And Lord, as we depart from this place, may we love you with all of our hearts, soul, mind, and strength. And may we love each other as we love ourselves as you commanded us in Christ. Amen. If you'll take your hymn books and open to page 345, our first hymn is Blessed Assurance. <coughs> Our gospel lesson this morning comes from Luke 22, verses 7 through 8 and 14 through 20. Luke 22, 7 through 8 and 14 through 20. 
Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. And then 14 through 20. When the hour came, he took his place at the table, and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I have one uh, added prayer request that's been given me to add to the printed prayer list that you have. Asa Barnes, uh, Jeanette's nephew, who was one month old, had to be uh, airlifted for in critical condition today. So please remember that family and that little child. Also, uh, continue to remember all of those on our list, uh, Sam Hedgepath, Miss Ruby Driver, uh, Ida Mae Lucas, and uh, that name of that place in Goldsboro where Ida Mae is is Willow Creek Nursing <laughs> Rehab Center. And uh, Chuck Maston is still in the hospital in Wilson, and uh, Miss Meredith Lamb, please remember, continue remembering her at Wilson Pines. Are there other spoken requests? Yes, Marshall, uh, recovering from his injury at the wrestling match yesterday, Fayetteville. Anyone else? How about uplifted hands? Let's go to the Lord in a moment of prayer. Holy God, we truly have been washed in the waters of baptism when we follow your commands. We have died to our old lives and we have, ridden, we have risen to a new life in Christ. Yet, yeah, Lord, we don't always remember to live as those who are saved and those who are claimed by God. So, Holy God, instill in each of us the desire to reclaim our baptism so that our lives may better reflect who we are as Christians. Open our hearts. Help us to serve others, to be bold witnesses to your redeeming grace and to care for people who suffer in body, in mind, or in spirit. And grant that through our actions, through our words, others will see you in us. Holy God, truly we lift up all those who are sick, whether it be body, mind, or spirit before you, all those on our prayer list and those names and needs given or unspoken. Visit them, Lord, with your presence, with your comfort, with your strength, and use us to be your presence to those for whom we have opportunity to pray and those we have opportunity to serve. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we trust.
As we prepare to worship through our gifts, hear the words of the Apostle Paul in Philippians 3.20. Our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body. May our giving be guided by this blessed hope that we share that Paul reminds us of in this text. And we ask you to praise the Lord with your gifts.
you lead us as we pray? Let us pray, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for this day and all the many blessings of life. Again, Lord, we thank you for the special service that we have today. We thank you for the opportunity to give back a portion that is yours. Use these tithes and offering, Lord. Build your kingdom here on earth. This I pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Our epistle lesson this morning comes from Romans. 6 verses 1 through 11 Romans 6 1 through 11 what then are we to say should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound by no means how can we who died to sin go on living in it do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we, too, might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in death like his, we will certainly be united with him in the resurrection body, in the resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand and join us in the confession prayer that is in your bulletin. Let us pray. In the light of your gracious, boundless greatness and righteousness, O oh God, we see our faults. You sent us Jesus, and through his life, death, and resurrection, you work to destroy our sins and cleanse our hearts. Forgive us, we pray. Thank you for your amazing love and grace at work in our lives. Amen. At this time, the children who are being baptized today need to remain in the sanctuary but if any other children would like to go with me to junior church you may you may be seated and we will be returning for the baptism <laughs> I believe you got a house full this morning. Yeah, that's great. That's great. We need to have multiple baptism services every Sunday. Don't get overly concerned about the length of the scripture. It has no relationship to the length of the message. But these are important texts for our services today. In the 28th chapter of Matthew, a very familiar passage of Scripture that is often referred to as Christ's great commission to his disciples. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. And in the 13th chapter of Matthew, the Gospel according to St. John, we find these words written beginning with verse 1. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper... 
Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew he was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and returned to the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So, if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very, very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We are so blessed to be able to do the service that we're doing today. We are so thrilled. One of the things we do as we celebrate baptism is also to celebrate the other two ordinances, sacred ordinances of our church, which are the Lord's Supper and washing of the saints' feet with those candidates that come forward for baptism. These things are symbols. They are signs. They are a kind of seal. S-E-A-L, not zeal, Z-E-A-L. They are powerful things. Symbols are very powerful things. In World War II, the image of the swastika put fear in everybody's heart. Everyone knew what it was. Anytime we see this symbol or any derivative of the cross, we know what it means. Most of the world does at least. Even if they're not Christian, they know what it means. It communicates the gospel to us visually. If you look around the, the stained glass windows, each one of them have a religious symbol in the center part of it, in the center of that center part. And each one of them communicates something out of the scriptures about Christ or about the gospels. If you look at the big window out in the narthex as you came in, there's a symbol of the four gospels in those windows. Symbols are powerful things. They communicate a lot just by the visual image. Now, the Luke 2 text that was read earlier is a familiar one. We use it a lot when we are doing the Lord's Supper. And the text that is very similar to that from Mark and from Matthew, or the 1 Corinthians 11 text where Paul wrote. We use one of those texts every time we celebrate the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion. And there are a lot of different interpretations of the meaning or the theology of the Lord's Supper. The one that our denomination follows is based on the words that Jesus said, This is my body and this is my blood, in reference to the bread and the grape juice. These are symbolic items, they are symbolic statements, they are visuals, they are verbal things. They are not intended to be taken literally, but they are symbols, they are signs, they are a seal of the covenant of grace through Jesus Christ. Now, we are told in the Gospels that the Lord's Supper that Jesus instituted on Thursday night that he was betrayed took place in the upper room after they had just finished the Passover meal. 
They were all Jewish. They were there to celebrate this high holy festival of the Jewish church. The elements of the Lord's Supper that I've mentioned briefly are, are important. The broken bread symbolizing or a sign of the body of Jesus gave for us, broken by death, the cup, the wine in some communions, or the grape juice as we use it. The cup that is a symbol for His blood. The blood of the new covenant are the words that Paul used. And also Paul added this that the Gospels do not have. Jesus said after he had done the bread and the cup, do this in remembrance of me. It's a way to help us remember what Christ did for us on the cross and through his life that he lived on this earth. The John 13 text is the only place in the four Gospels that records what we refer to as the washing of the saints' feet, commonly called feet washing. And it was instituted by Jesus in that 13th chapter. And John says this happened just prior to the Passover itself. It could have been that same Passover Eve. And John says, now before the, pass of the, fe uh, the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, the hour of his death, to depart out of this world to the Father. That's the setting John gave us. The Gospel of John is very big on signs, so immediately as John introduced this acted out parable of Jesus with his disciples, he told us that this is a major sign of what was to come for him, what was to come for all of his disciples that were gathered with him that night eventually in their life and witness and what still comes to some Christians today. Some Christians have to pay the ultimate price to give their life. Observing the washing of the saints' feet, though, as a sacred ordinance, and the older word that was used was sacrament, there are at least four meanings that are symbolized by this acted-out parable of Jesus. Jesus said, first of all, <clears throat> we ought to do that. He said, this is something that is good for us to do. So as we do this, it's an act of simple obedience to Christ. This becomes a symbol of our faith commitment to Jesus Christ. Secondly, he said, observing this ordinance is an act of humility. It is a humbling experience to kneel before a brother or sister in Christ, take a basin and towel, wash their feet, the act that in Jesus' day a household servant did for those guests who came into the house. Or if a person did, could not afford household servants, as they had guests enter their homes, they would do that. The host would do that themselves. So Jesus Christ, our host, gave us an example as he washed his disciples' feet. And as always, this sacred ordinance reminds us of our call to be servants, servants of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, and being willing to be servants to each other as brothers and sisters in Christ, as the family of God. And the fourth thing this act does is to remind us of our need for continual cleansing from sin through confession, through repentance, through experiencing God's forgiveness. On those either dusty or muddy roads that people traveled in Jesus' time, travel was mostly by foot. And that's why it was an important act of gracious hospitality for those people who were traveling and guests in someone's home to have their feet washed either by the servants or by the hosts themselves. Now, I want to move on quickly because baptism is the center of our service today. Both the Matthew 28 and the Romans 6 text as well as Mark 16, 15 and 16, and other texts present the impetus for baptism as a symbol, as a sign of our commitment to Jesus Christ, and further as a seal of the covenant of grace that we enter into through Jesus Christ. Baptism by immersion is what we practiced, and it did not begin with John the Baptist's ministry or with Jesus' command in the Great Commission. It was practiced earlier by the Jews when pagans or Gentiles came into the Jewish faith as a part of ritual cleansing. There have been archaeological discoveries of in different ancient Jewish communities of these deep baptismal pools. They simply walked down one set of steps, walked through the waters and out the other side. It was a form of ritual cleansing. Baptism 
is a symbol, a sign, a seal of our covenant in God's grace. But John the Baptist's baptism added a different element. He was talking primarily to Jewish people. And he was calling the Jewish people to repentance. He was calling the Jewish people to seek on their own a forgiveness of God's sins. And baptism was a symbol that that had taken place. That they had sought and received God's forgiveness for sins. And it was done only once with John the Baptist and with the first century church as they began to follow Jesus' command and baptize all those who came to them. I will never forget Billy Graham saying <clears throat> many times over the years hearing him preach, the reason we ask you to come publicly is because in the New Testament, Jesus Christ taught and preached and called publicly for people to acknowledge him. And then when the baptisms took place, it was a public thing, not a private experience. Our faith is not meant to be a private thing. It is very personal. It is very intimate. But it is not private. It is to be celebrated in community, and it is to be shared with the world around us. We have something. We have something great. We have something wonderful. We have something holy and eternal that's given us through Jesus Christ. And I don't know about you, but when I get good things, I like to tell other people about them. I like to share them with other people. And this faith that we receive through Jesus Christ as His gift of grace to us is something that needs to be shared. And baptism is the beginning of your own personal witness and testimony of saying to others, I've chosen to follow Jesus Christ. Not because I'm perfect, not because I'll live a sinless life, but because I've received the gift of salvation that He offers me, and I'm seeking His help and His power to live my life in praise to Him. What a truly awesome and holy and sacred time we share today as we celebrate the commitment of those persons to receive baptism into Christ's death and resurrection, as to use the words of Paul in Romans 6. Now, we're going to go to those special places. Our deacons will take their place and be prepared to serve our candidates for baptism. And any of you that are being baptized that are not up on the front row, please come and join us now. Patrick, if you will come. And, and our deacons will come and get in place. Is there anyone else who needs to come? Yes. Lorelai, you do? Right. Our deacons will go ahead and, and, and wash the feet of those candidates that are here. You need to take your shoes off so that your feet can be washed by our deacons. Okay. You want to keep your, your hose on, ladies. There's a lot of ladies that do that all the time. This is following the instructions of Christ in uh, the 13th chapter of John's Gospel that I've just talked about. Now our deacons will serve the candidates.
Jesus said, This is my body given for you. This do as oft as you eat it in remembrance of me. Take the bread. In a similar manner, Jesus took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood in Jesus Christ. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Take and drink. Let us pray. Father, for these sacred acts that we have just been privileged to participate in, the symbol of humility and service, the symbol of your body and your blood given for our salvation, we praise you. O Lord, consecrate these acts to yourself and to the strengthening and encouragement of our faith. And now, Lord, continue to go with us in the further important part of this service, the baptism of these who've come pledging to follow Christ. In your holy name, amen. Now the candidates and the deacons and I will repair to prepare to enter the baptistry.
because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, in obedience to Christ's command and following his example, I baptize you, our sister, Lorelai Ferguson, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, into the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good deeds and bring glory and praise to your Father in heaven. Amen. Because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, in obedience to Christ's command and in following his example, I baptize you, our sister Kaylee Bulla, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, into the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Jesus said, You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good deeds and bring glory and praise to your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, in obedience to his command and following his example, I baptize you, our brother Gabriel Batts, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, into the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Jesus said, You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good deeds and bring glory and praise to your Father in heaven. Amen.
because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, in obedience to His command and in following His example, I baptize you, our brother Elijah Batts, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, into the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, in obedience to His command, and in following His example, I baptize you, our sister, Jessica Mayo, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, into the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, in obedience to His command and in following His example, I baptize you, our brother Matthew Mayo, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, into the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify and praise your Father who is in heaven. Amen.
because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, in obedience to His command, and in following His example, I baptize you, our sister Mary Bulla, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, into the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before others that they may say your, see your good works and praise and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, in obedience to His command and following His example, I baptize you, our sister Carolyn Johnson, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, into the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Jesus said, You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, in obedience to His command and in following His example, I baptize you, our brother Patrick Etheridge, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, into the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify and praise your Father who is in heaven. Patrick was talking about getting the hair out of his eyes before he went. <laughs> I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing on what we've just done and then the uh, music, our musicians and our deacons will close the service. Let us pray. Beloved children of God, remember your baptism. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Live each day as a new day in Christ. Amen. 
you'll take your hymn books and turn to page 389, our invitation to faith hymn is more about Jesus. Please stand. to God's altar, and as I stand here, I invite you to use God's altar in the next few minutes as we bow for silent prayer. If there's anybody here that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, what a wonderful day we've had, and what a wonderful day it would be if you were to make that decision. Um, we've got the baptismal pool warmed up. <laughs> Just take a few minutes in silent prayer, then I'll close. If anybody sees the need for, for this altar, please come and yeah. Father, we are so blessed today, Lord. We, Our hearts are full, Lord. And we give you all the thanks and all the glory. We ask that you will be with those that were baptized today. Be with us as a church that we may lead and direct them as you would have us to do, Lord. We ask that you will be with us now to this service, Lord, and bring us back at our next appointed hour. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.